Josie Rogers calling in from uh, Uganda, from Namulanda, and we're on the property of Salvation for the Nations Church. And to this week, we've had an exciting week. We've had a lot going on. I have Joshua down here pulling on my shirt. Then we have Precious and Anisha and Levin. And Levin and his mom recently moved onto our property with us. Um, they came in from a village. They don't have the finances. So we, we've taken them in for a short time, and he actually doesn't even speak English or Luvanda. He speaks his, his native tongue. So anyways, um, I'm going to introduce you to Kate. She's been working with our ministry, and she's living with me in my home here. And um, we've had a really good week, and actually in a couple days we're traveling to Kenya to minister in a conference. And um, so the next update will be watching from Kenya. So God bless you, and I, I trust that you're encouraged as you watch. Um, this week's episode, and you'll see some of the, the meetings that we have every single morning. I like to teach teach the word to the leadership, have time in prayer, and have time in worship. It's really important to grow as a team, to grow in faith as a team, and um, really walk the things out in prayer, take care of it in prayer, so then we can see it come out in the natural. So God bless you. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are with Kate, and I'm, I'm excited for you to get to know her, maybe not as well as I do. Maybe not as well as I do, but I want you to get to know her, the fun side, the, the, the hardcore Kate who loves the Lord. So Kate, tell us, tell us who you are. Tell us your testimony. Give us, some, give it, give us some in, an inside scoop of who you are. Um, I'm called Kate. I'm from Uganda. I live in Uganda in Chile. So, uh, but now I'm a born again Christian, but before I wasn't, I thank God for her. I grew up in a family whereby it was a, a born again family, and I myself I wasn't, I was a, I wasn't real a born again Christian, cause I was like, I still wanted to do the other part of life of that teenage age, and really I did, but when I came to know Jesus through some friend of mine called Daniel Babanchu from Brazil. Uh, for the first time we met, I was like, maybe we can be friends, but don't you take me to a church, because I for sure I didn't like going. But after after telling me, that I was like, okay, do you know how to sing? I was like, yeah, I know, uh, I can try, but I'm not good. So when I try and do the singing, I was like, oh, really, you sing good. I think you should come to church. I start doing, uh, I start hoping with a, uh, the worship team was like, but when I got up in the church and we were singing, uh, doing the stuff because I liked singing and dancing, so I felt I was like, okay, maybe I can go to the church and do the dancing like that. But I wasn't in a part of getting born again. I just wanted to do that crap. So when I did that, we got up, preached. Which is good. Anyway, compared to African preaching or Indian preaching, but later I felt like I think where I thought where God has brought my family from, because I grew up seeing my family, my dad, my mom, we are going down there and we pray God bless us, uh, bless our kids. If they wanted to okay, whatever life I'm passing through now is because of my first prayers. So I got to remember that God has brought me to Europe, has brought my son to Europe, has brought me. Uh, I think that generally a son to Europe, uh, otherwise also I hope me to go back and protect him because after the death of my dad, because I couldn't think that my dad could give uh, what he can. But when there is a point when Daniel Babash preached, some some boy for that day and he talked about the actual fathers compared to living fathers and there we came I was like huh, maybe this is the way all the preachers do. I don't need to listen so much, I'll just be myself after my dad going. But later I got to know Susanna Rogers from US. There she came. The preaching boy that came with a Daniel preaching. And uh, she was confirming the word I've ever uh, I've heard from Daniel. But later I met before I met Josie, and because of Daniel's preaching, I was like, let me just try. So 
I tried to what? <laughs> to like to feed me with the word of God and how to confess the word of God upon my life and how to move that did thing in a godly way and how to be led by the Holy Spirit which led me to get a, a strong foundation in me with Christ and um, I'm happy though sometimes I miss my dad but that's not the point I need to be focused Otherwise, I thank God for these two people, Josie Rogers from the US, uh, Daniel Babashi from, they are really doing a great work in me, but by the hope of God. So, I think that's it. That's how I came to know God. And I am focused. Um, I, I really love God now. I really love God. But before I was... Anyway, uh, I compared God for being honest from the bottom. I, I compared God, I was like, maybe God was our also theory. The theory is good to know from school because we got to know that this happened because of the theory. Some so brought up some theory and this happened. Uh, this happened because of some guy from his age that theory. So I was like, maybe we are just being confused with God. Like, God happens when it's not really, really, really happening. Or like, there is no God in life. Some things just happen because of the that's what we are supposed to go through and we say it's God. But all in all, I thank God. At least I can understand that there is God. That's right, and He loves you more than anything. Of course, I know that Josie, you've told me how He loves me more than anyone. So. And does He love everyone else more than anything? Of course, He does. His love is unconditional. Hallelujah. So thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. You'll see more of her later on. Bye. Bye. See you there. Now Galatia, Colossians, Philippians. We have these four books that were written particularly to the church. And who are we? Are we the church? Yeah, we're the church. We are the body of Christ. And so these books were not only written to the church of Ephesus or Philippians, but they were specifically written for us. And in the same way that I've talked to you about confessing the word of God, meditating on the word of God, we need to pray the word of God over our life, over our situation, over our family members, over the church, over our community. Because if we truly believe His Word is alive, and His Word is living, and sharper than any double-edged sword, we can know that when we speak His Word, things will begin to happen. I know that when I pray, I don't just want to pray my own thoughts. Because God says that His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And His ways are higher than my ways. So how do my thoughts become agreeable with His thoughts? And how do my ways come in line with they're reading his word, right? So I want us to go to Colossians chapter 1. Talk about, about reading this letter. 
conversations with witch doctors. Because had we entered into these villages without authority, we would have not been able to stay. Because we, no one is going to come in here and sleep here unless we give them authority. And it's the same with the villages in the Amazon. We have to respect the authority. And so when we were pioneering new works, starting new works, sharing the gospel, building relationships, I would pray this over the people and as a, as a, to today we pioneered five, five works and we now have five men and we have five men Indigenous men who are studying in Leticia, Colombia, at the Bible School, being trained in the Word of God, so they can take the, the Word of God back to their villages. That, that didn't happen overnight. But that happens through Speaking and declaring the word of God. I have seen these men grow in wisdom. Honoring God with their lives. Bearing good fruit in their lives. Increasing in knowledge. Being strengthened. In the midst of persecution. There's one particular man who he, he was really discouraged last year because his village wasn't it wasn't really receptive. There was a group of people that were believers. But he he was having so much attack from the people in the community that he was becoming discouraged of being a Christian. He was becoming disheartened. He wanted to give up and quit. But he knew that God had a call for his life. And he had traveled with us to two other villages to pioneer new works. And at this time, he was part of the, the indigenous police and so he was getting lots of persecution but today he's studying in the Bible school he didn't quit I have partners in the United States that are helping to finance and, and, and support these men studying. Because in the natural, they don't have the money to do so. And so what I'm saying is, when we pray the word of God, and we believe the word of God, and remember yesterday during service, I was talking about faith and perseverance. I was talking about faith and perseverance.
in all spiritual wisdom into the ways and purposes of God in understanding and discernment of spiritual things that you, Prima, may walk and live and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord desiring to please him in all things bearing fruit in every good work steadily growing and increasing by the knowledge of God and I pray that you pray much may be strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance perseverance patience and forbearance with sadness with sadness, no, with joy. With joy. Because we are to have joy in our life. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so Paul was praying over the church that we would be strengthened according to the might of his glory and that we would exercise in our life. What does it mean to exercise? to practice what you've learned. The Christian life is not just about hearing. Because we are not to be hearers only. But to be doers of the word. Faith without works is dead. And so when we are growing in our faith and we are growing in our relationship with the Lord we have a choice every day to exercise to practice what we have learned. Because if we aren't practicing it are we really learning it? Are we really learning? Are we really learning? Mm. So, when I was going to Bible school, I was there from 2005 to 2008. And you are in a Bible school for four to four and a half hours a day in the morning. Five days a week. You're being set up with the Bible school. You're being saturated by the word of God. But what happens if I'm just soaking everything up? But not giving anything out. I'm going to become spiritually obese. <laughs> and did not apply what I was learning that I wasn't truly hearing and obeying. I was involved with helping with the youth ministry on the prayer telephone lines when people would call in around the world for prayer. I was involved in a prayer group. The worship team. I also worked two to three jobs at a time. So I was receiving. I was soaking up. Kind of like a sponge. Like a sponge. That I was pouring back out. So I was practicing what I was learning. So I could bear good fruit in my 
that I could be patient and endure. So, so that I could be strengthened and have joy and so in our prayer life we should have it's more than just words. It's, it's more than just sitting in a room. But it's our relationship with God. And our prayer life is not just about us. It's not just about what I need and what I want. When we have a relationship with God, He will put people on our hearts to pray for. He will put situations around the world on our hearts to pray for. And He will also show you things in your own life that you are to, to pray for and some things that you need to cut out of your life and some areas that you're doing really good in and other areas that you need to grow in but our prayer life comes from our relationship with God I have a friend in the United States. I've known her for more than half of my life. And so she, she, she sometimes messages me on Facebook or calls me. She says, Josie, I need one of those powerful prayers. It's not because I'm a powerful woman. I don't have power in myself. I have faith in the word. And I have spent time in the word. So his word is in my heart. But I still have so much more to learn. But I know that when I pray according to the word of God to the Father. Here we are in Amalanda. I'm here with Pastor Collins and Pastor Freeman and we're headed out to evangelize for the next couple hours. Every Saturday they head out to different places where they've not yet been. And so today's my first time going out with them. I'm excited. We're believing God for salvations because that's why we do what we do. And to pray for the sick and to see miracles because we serve a God who is a miracle worker. So I'm excited to, to meet the people and to talk with them and, and to, oh, there goes my glasses. Allow the Lord to do what he wants to do. So testimonies to come. Bye. Hello. 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 So here we are. We just got done for the last couple hours going house to house. And um, it, <laughs> we went to one house and they didn't want to listen to anything we said. I believe they're Muslim. But you know, we're praying for them because the Bible says that he came to seek and save that which was lost. So we're just going to be loving people and being persistent and not giving up. Oh, there's a cow. Hello there. And for the last like almost hour, we've been sitting down with this woman. She's, she said that she was raised and born in a Catholic home, but she really does, she doesn't know. But she doesn't know the word. She doesn't know who Jesus is. She doesn't really know a whole lot biblically in that way. And so there have been Christians that have gone to her shop, her little her little shop. She sells vegetables and things and. They tell her, they tell her, or they've told her that they're born again. But for them to pray with her and for them to share anything to from the Bible with her, she has to pay, and that's not hello. And that that's not biblical at all. The Bible says that we've been freely given, so we are to freely give. And when people try to manipulate to try to get money for their own gain, that's almost witchcraft. And so undoing the work of the enemy basically yeah. undoing the confusion and the error in that way so um it, it's been a good morning now we're hungry it's time to eat so amen god is doing good things and we expect the best is still yet to come